Oh, hello there. So I just made a sci-fi gun and I wanted to share some of the processes for creating the firing and creating the reloads. Uh, just to give you some new ideas on things you can accomplish, tools to use, layering elements, this and that. So let's get on with it. Uh, first and foremost, I'm going to play the assets so you know what you're about to hear and then we can pull apart each one piece by piece. Pretty cool, and that's a rapid fire gun. Sort of sci fi. And we have the reload. That. Nice tonal elements. All right, so let's dig into what makes these work after all this processing and editing for this day. So, when making a gun, uh, I tend to subscribe to the similar idea of most people in that you should think of three or four elements. The mech of the gun, what makes the gun actually physically the gun, the firing of the gun, the meat of the gun, the low end or whatever, um, you know, gives it some guts and some tonal element uh, to make it a unique sonic signature or sci-fi it up or what have you. So the mech for this gun, the things that give it the body, are those two things. And that's a sound morph library process, pitched, cut, edited, run through uh, Pro-Q2 and Saturn, uh, which help it sound. So that's the before. First of all, it's stereo, so I made it mono. Second of all, it, it was all high end and lows and I wanted to make more of a low mid and bring it forward. Saturn has a really good way of moving things forward, reducing room tone and making it sound more synthetic and closer. Uh, so I used this preset for that and I pushed forward those low mids and reduced the highs. That's right, reduced. Don't be afraid to cut high end. So on its, own, on its own, you know, it gives a weight to this plastic gun that also has a touch of a sci-fi tonality to it. And then I added one more sci-fi element that's pure sci-fi, and that's the riser uh, run through some plugins. The riser is a simple sweeping uh, synthesizer, very easy to program, uh, very easy to make quick, fast, simple tones. Then you can cut them and process them after you do things with them, which is very handy. I ran it through Indent 2, which gave it some distortion, a nice clipping slash distortion sound with a cutoff and a resonance uh, tone on the filter. And I reduced the high end again because it just had too much cutting high end. And that particular element is this. On its own, not too effective but again this is a rapid fire gun so now we have the weight of the gun and a sci-fi element poking through but what's that uh, since this is a regular gun you probably need some gun firing so there's a few things going on here this is the scar gun i use two scar recordings uh, i believe they're the frank Bree library uh I'm not sure. I'd have to go back and look. I can't tell by that name. And you know, you th you'd think I'd know by now, but I got so many libraries I forget. Uh, alloy, key to gun sound design because everything can be multiband. The transient can be multiband. The exciter can be multiband. These two dynamics in a row can be multiband. Fantastic. So what's going on with this is I'm mostly using it for gating. I'm gating the highs in particular. I'm getting rid of the tail and the noise and allowing just that initial high end to poke through. That's what makes it sound close, but you don't need it the whole time. You cut that out, and that wasn't needed. This isn't the tail. This is just for that initial element of the ping. The uh, bullet has left this gun sound. So that's that. Uh, that makes it more real. That makes it sound like an actual gun instead of a laser 
device. Uh, then I have a little sci-fi process gun. And when you take this off, it's shocking the difference. And I like that because it represents the dust that fires out of the gun and it sounds wispy as if it's sort of pushed it out through a non-traditional mechanism of a gun. This was done using Isotope Trash 2, which is an underutilized, super cool processor, even if you just use the filter section. Why, you might ask? Well, each one of the six filters can be modulated, either by LFO or envelope. So I've gone into one, and I've set the beginning fundamental down at 175, and it's a high pass. So it's going to cut out all the lows right away with 10 milliseconds as it hits 13 dB threshold. And it's going to move all the way up to 9761. And it's going to increase resonance as it goes up there. So it starts with no very low resonance, 0.47 Q. And when it hits the high peak, it's going to peak out. And you can control how much it peaks at the top but it won't peak that whole time. It starts low and then it then it peaks and then it comes back to having no peak. Super cool, it's two modulations in one really. Uh, two for one deal, and I think I was at 2.8, 2.6, likely close enough. So that was my favorite part of that. This also has a multi-band uh, compressor section, so if you don't wanna use alloy or you don't wanna buy something new, you can certainly use this as your multiband tool. Uh, you can see all in there. Isotope, just killing it, just killing it. Uh, and I use the imager to reduce the bandwidth, uh, sorry, the width of this band, sort of bandwidth, the band to width, <laughs> so that it doesn't um, tail out in the low mids. I didn't like it. It wasn't needed on this asset. I used something else for the tail later. So I reduced the bandwidth of that. Those two together. Already sounding like a gun. Then I added some punch. And then I have one more that's much more low end punchy. Uh, so this is the same thing. This is an aggressive gate on the mids and the highs. You can sort of think of it as lazy editing using gating. But maybe I'm lazy. Maybe I'm efficient you be the judge uh, so I'm doing a gate at 36 and 34 very aggressive because I didn't like that high-end tail it was too high it felt artificial I could tune it I could EQ it but this wasn't for the tail so I cut it I believe I boosted the lows as well yeah I did with the transient multi-band so I'm punching up the, the lows and the highs just for the initial transient of it, which works on this because it's super transient. There's the tail. Nice, clean sound that I just left. I like the carbine. Car carbine. Didn't have any echoes. Didn't feel like a canyon. And since I can't control it in this game, I just left it. And boom. Crunchy low mids from that. So this is a slate rack. Highly recommend the slate plugs. They're kick ass. I'm using earth to boost the low end. Um, also doing a very good trick, which is high passing and boosting lows. That way, without that, this is what it sounds like. That's earth. That's uh, a shelf around 80, I think. Maybe 50, somewhere around 80 or 100. Yeah, that's too much. But if you add a high pass at 50 and then you boost the hell out of earth, now you get that good low punch while adding a high pass. Uh, highly recommend that trick. Um, you can do that with this one as well by boosting the lows and adding a high pass. Very good trick for adding lows but not out of control sub lows. The FGN is used to punch up a little of the attack and the low end. It's a nice aggressive EQ, not a smooth one at all.
big difference. Much more uh, saturated, uh, nice, thicker sound. And finally, the Monster, which is an 1176 all buttons in module. For anyone not familiar, I won't go into it too deep. It's just a VCA 1176 style with all buttons in, which is a very aggressive sound. So since it's so aggressive, I used a mix of only 20%. If you do it the whole thing, it's going to be too much, usually, unless it's a drum room. So I left it at a mix of 20, which adds... Oh, yeah. How would I live without you, Slate? Uh, so, this is the firing. This is the synth. But it's missing the body of the gun, so you add in the mech. Now all elements are represented, and we have a gunfire. So that's that element. Uh, then, we have the reload. The reload is a mix of a uh, servo source I've recorded with a contact microphone from a telescope. I believe it was the Barkus Berry, but it might have been my cold gold contact. And uh, sound morph, again, modulated, pitched, and affected. So let's go in one by one. This is the sound morph material. But this is it before and not all the way before I've, you know, affected, pitched, and done other things before all this stuff, but that'll sound more like sound more if you might be familiar with, which is cool, but I wanted it to be more forward, pulled forward in the mix, uh, a little more saturated, a little more uh, plastic-y, plastic uh, so I'm doing that with alloy, with some excitement. as well as some dynamic uh, tuning, but not much as I recall. I don't think I did too much with the dynamics. Ah, the low end. I ducked the low end on this. I didn't want it to be there that heavy. I just wanted it at the beginning of that asset. And you can automate that in and out if you really want to adjust it. Pushed a little of that kind of mid clack reduced some of the lows and boosted uh, some of the lows to get rid of this kind of overly uh, tubby kind of low and again reduced highs and did a high pat or a high <laughs> high cut low pass to get rid of some of that too close to it sound to actually place it in the scene then Saturn which does the best job at pulling things forward and reducing a little room tone making things sound modern uh, and very close in the mix. Granted, the volume's not level balanced and this and that, but I, I assure you, it does a great job at taking sounds and making them closer. Uh, and I'm auto automating certain parameters throughout to increase low end and adjust the Saturn mix so certain parts are more aggressive. Then we have some servos. And that's just process pitch servos. This is for the, the main part of the gun, opening and closing, the bigger part, not the small. So that's some of the smaller mechanics of it. Then we have the very teeny part of the gun. <laughs> And that's the telescope I recorded. What's critical is that I pitched this one up uh, 22 in a destructive pitch manner because the original sounds like this. Which I thought was cool, but in the context of the gun, I didn't feel like it stood out enough. And I like the sci-fi sort of glitchy artifact that the destructive 22 provided. I also tried to focus on having the mid of the gun and the front of the gun having different tonalities to stand out and not be cluttered. That way the main focus is mid pitch, small pitch, and starting small, ending small. <laughs> now that bad edit there in isolation sounds bad, but it 
sounds better in context because look at this movement. It does shoot right up. And I actually like the bad edit there. So not all fades are good edits and not all bad edits are actually bad. <laughs> so let's hear those elements. All together, you have a weight of a gun. You have a nice thick, but not too tubby low end. So it doesn't sound bigger than it is. You have servos for each piece of the gun. You have a clear uh, tonal focus and not a cluttered spectrum. You know, I had a lot more sounds in here before and I kept cutting them out because it just was too much. You could get every movement here and then it's a mess, sonic mess. So I picked the clear tonal aspects I liked and this is it. And you'll notice the beginning and the end have that nice small piece focus. That gives a focus to the front of the gun where the player's looking. So that is a Call of Duty weapon sound design session with some notes. I hope you got something out of that, uh, learned some processes, and it's useful for you.